law of sines. We're at 8.5b, which means there's an 8.5a. And if you haven't seen it, you might become lost or confused. And you can go to the geometry playlist in the description. We can solve any triangle by calculating trigonometric ratios for angles up to 180 degrees. And we can use the altitude of a triangle to find a relationship between the triangle's side lengths. In triangle ABC, let H represent the length of the altitude from C to segment AB. And from the diagram, the sine of A is equal to H over B, and the sine of B is equal to H over A. And by solving for H, we find that H is equal to B sine of A, and H is equal to A sine of B. So B sine of A is equal to A sine of B, and sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B. Now, I know that can sound confusing, but stick with me, and throughout this video, hopefully you'll understand. We can also use another altitude to show that these ratios equal sine of C over C. All right? See, so we have a different altitude. Now, triangles may not always be called obtuse. You might hear them called oblique triangles. An oblique triangle is a triangle that is not a right triangle. It can be an acute or obtuse. We can solve any triangle using the sine and cosine ratios. So here's the law of sines. We're going to do the law of cosines in the next video, 8.5c. The theorem says for any triangle ABC with side lengths A, B, and C, the sine of A over A is equal to the sine of B over B, which is equal to the sine of C over C. And the ratio of each side to its angle is equal to the ratio of any other side to its angle. And we can use the law of sines to solve a triangle if we're given two angle measures in any side length, ASA or AAS. So here we have an angle, a side, and an angle. So that's ASA, angle, side, angle. And over here, we're given an angle, an angle, and a side. So we could use the law of sines to solve the triangle with this information. Also, we can do two side lengths, and a non-included angle measure. So notice it says non-included. So this would be SSA. We have a side, a side, and an angle. Notice that it's not the angle in between the 7 and 5. It's this one out here. We could also do it with this one if we have it. See? SSA. And in a proportion with three parts, we can use any of the two parts together. Okay? So when we have two angle measures in any side length, AAS or ASA, or if we have two side lengths and a non-included angle measure, SSA, we can use the law of sines. And using the law of sines, we can find each measure. We can round the lengths to the nearest tenth and angle measures to the nearest degree. Having two angles and an opposite side, here we have an angle that's 105 degrees, an angle that's 32 degrees, and a side that's 18, so that's AAS, two angles and an opposite side. If we want to find DF, we can do the sine of D over EF is equal to the sine of E over DF. That's the law of sines. That means if we substitute in the values, we've got the sine of 105 degrees over 18 is equal to the sine of 32 degrees over DF. And using the cross products property, we can do DF times sine of 105 degrees is equal to 18 times the sine of 32 degrees. Now we can divide both sides by the sine of 105 degrees. So these cancel out. We're left with DF is equal to the quotient of 18 sine of 32 degrees over sine of 105 degrees. And we do it on our trusty calculator. We get this nice long decimal that we can round to the nearest tenth as approximately 9.9. .9. And remember, the longest side is always opposite the largest angle, and the shortest side is always opposite the smallest angle, and we don't round our answers until the final step of the computation so that we'll be more accurate, okay? Now, this is a little different. Having two sides and a non-included measure, here we have this triangle. We've got two sides and a non-included measure. We've got a side that's 7, a side that's 5, and an angle that's 75 degrees. Okay, so that's SSA, side-side angle. To find the measure of angle S, we do the sine of T over RS is equal to the sine of S over RT. 
That's the law of sines. When we substitute in the given values, we get the sine of 75 degrees over 7 is equal to the sine of S over 5. Now, we can multiply both sides by 5. This 5 would cancel out this 5. We're left with the sine of S over 1, which is the sine of S. And we can put it on the left side. And on this side, we've got 5 sine of 75 over 7. We use the inverse sine function to find the measure of angle S. So on our calculator, we would put in 5 times 75 sine equals, then we would divide it by the 7, hit equals, then for the inverse we would hit shift sine, it would give us this nice decimal here, and we can round that off to approximately 44 degrees. And because trig functions are defined as ratios of side lengths in right triangles, we can't solve obtuse triangles directly. We can use the law of sines and the law of cosines. In the law of sines, one of the sines becomes 1. In the law of cosines, the cosine becomes 0. And the sine of an obtuse angle is equal to the sine of its supplement. And each side of a triangle is the same ratio as the sine of its opposite angle. And the law of sines can also be derived from the formula for the area of a triangle. In any triangle ABC with side lengths A, B, and C, we draw the altitude to each side. So here we've got this altitude, We've got this altitude and we've got this altitude, and the area can be found in three ways by using each side as the base. And this produces the equation half BC sine of A is equal to half AC sine of B is equal to half AB sine of C. And we divide each expression, this one, this one, and this one, by half ABC, and it follows that sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B is equal to sine of C over C, just like we did back in the beginning of the video. Okay, so here's what's happening. I'll break it down more. We're going to take this expression, half BC sine of A, we're going to divide it by half ABC, and what happens is we cancel out the half, we cancel out the B, and we cancel out the C. And we're left with sine of A over A. If we do it to this one, half AC sine of B, and divide it by half ABC, we cancel out the half, we cancel out the A, we cancel out the C, we're left with sine of B over B. When we do it to this one, half AB sine of C, and divide it by half ABC, we cancel out the half, the A, and the B, and we're left with sine of C over C. Okay? Now, some of you might ask, why are trig ratios of some angles negative? I don't want to get too deep into trigonometry because we've only got a couple more videos and we're going to come out of this because this is geometry. When you look at a unit circle, okay, if the point of the angle is up here for sine, it's going to be a positive sign because the y is positive, and it'll be negative sign here because the y is negative. So for this angle right here, it's coming like this, and then down here, and the point is right here, it's in the negative, see? So that's why a trig ratio of an angle would be negative. And for cosine, it would be a positive cosine because the x is positive on this side and a negative cosine because the x is on the negative, see? So if we had an angle like this, 120 degree angle on our unit circle and the point was right here, it's in the negatives for the x value, see? So that would be sine for y value, cosine for the x value, see? It just depends on where the point is on the unit circle, all right? And you'll probably get into that more in trigonometry. So our next lesson is going to be that law of cosines, 8.5c. Then we're going to do a couple videos about vectors, and then we'll get into chapter 9 with 9.1a, and we'll talk about reflections, and we'll start getting into transformations and stuff again, okay? So... I hope I explained this well enough. If you are confused, you could try watching the video again because sometimes you might catch something that you missed the first time. And I hope you have a great day. I hope you're doing well. And I'm really proud of you for watching these videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.